So as of 2.8 Blender 2.82, we have a whole bunch of new additions to the math nodes, to the math node. And this was committed by Charlie Jolly. She does a lot of stuff, uh, commits for nodes. So thank you very much. This is going to help us greatly reduce the amount of nodes we need. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff that was added and changed. So what exactly has changed? Um, math nodes can now have up to three inputs. So that's changed. And there are a whole bunch of other operations that were added. I'm going to go over most of them, but some of them a little more, more quickly because they might not be that interesting. So let's get started right away. So the first one is the inverse square root. And well, if you hover over it, it just says one over the square root of a. So that's exactly what it does. It just takes one divided by the square root of whatever this value is. It's not really that interesting. Might save you a few nodes. Okay. Then the exponent, what that does, it um, does e, so the Euler's number to the power of x. And this is going to be our x value. Um, wait, sorry. Uh, let me find it here. So this is e to the x. And in addition, you have the sine hyperbo hyperbolic side and the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine. And if you add them together, you get e to the x. And there's also tangent hyperbolic, which is just sine hy hyperbolic sine divided by the co hyperbolic cosine. So these were added as well. We find them here. Let's see, then some of the other ones. Um, the sine, what this does, is it's not like the cosine, it, but uh, it takes if it, the value is less than zero, it returns minus one. If it's greater than zero, it returns one, and if it is zero, it returns zero. So as you can see here. Then we have the compare. So we already have less than and a greater than node. And to compare what that does is it checks to see if this value is equal to this value. And then this is like the threshold. So it might be easier if I just show you. So now it's checking is if x is equal to 0. But if I increase the threshold, you can see that it allows more value. It, with a range of 1.3. So if it's off by 1.3, everything less than 1.3 and greater than minus 1.3 is going to be allowed here. That's what basically what this does. It's useful, for example, um, the Truchet tiling video we did, I had to do some math with less than and equal to nodes to get a circle going. But with the compare node, you can do it just with one node. And then Let's see the truncate. What this does is if the values are less than zero, it does ceiling. And if it's greater than zero, it does floor. I think it's that way, or maybe it's the other way around. So as you can see around zero, the values are the same. And if I change this to, for example, floor or ceiling, you can see the difference. And then truncate combines the two. Then two regions just converts this value pretends it's in degrees and then convert it to radians. So if I type pi here, it's going to give me um, 180. And this, this one does the opposite. If I type, oh, I'm sorry. If I type 90 degrees here, it's going to give me pi divided by 2. And if I type pi divided by 2 here, it's going to give me 90 degrees. It's pretty straightforward. Then snap, we already had this in vector math. I don't know why we didn't have it in math nodes. But what it does is it just takes the floor of the first value divided by the second value and then multiplies it again by the second value. So it's a bit like floor and ceiling well, because it is floor, but then the values will be back to the range you can see, but it's sort of inverted. That way you don't have to play around with the scale value that much anymore. So now we have that. And then the most important ones are probably the wrap, ping pong, smooth, minimum, and maximum. So let me just go to decimals here. So 
Um, right. So what you see here, this is the wrap function. As you can see, it wraps between the green and the purple or the pink line. And if you change these values, the values will always stay between these two. So that way you don't have to play around that much with adding and subtracting and then scaling and then doing a floor or a fraction. It just does it for you. So this is the formula. I just copied it straight from where, um, right here somewhere in the, somewhere here, there's a formula there in the, that was added. Make sure I got it exactly the way it worked. And then this is the ping pong one. So as you can, that's where the name comes from because it's always in between those lines and it's like ping pong, like the game pong. Except that here, it's always gonna between, going to be between zero and then the second line. So the first one is taken into account. There you go. That's ping pong. And then another really important one is the smooth minimum. So as you can see, if I decrease this, this is basically how smoother, how smooth it gets. But for the node, it, this is set to three and you can't change that, but you can change how big the area of effect is. So if I change it really small and basically it's not going to do anything, it's just going to be minimum. I can show this actually in Blender. So let's take the smooth minimum. So by changing, oh, this is just, let's just leave this at zero. By changing this, you can change how big, and if you set this to a negative value or to zero, it's just going to be minimum. And if change is really big, it's, it's just gonna smooth out further away. This back up five. And the same thing of obviously for maximum, it's just the opposite thing. So those are all the new functions. Maybe I thought about something interesting with the hyperbolic cosine. So this is also known as a, it looks like this, right? So this is known as a catenary curve. And basically if you have like one, a fence post here and a fence post here, and there's a, like a rope hanging between them. This is the shape it's going to make. It's not going to be a parabola, but it's going to be this shape. And let me, Fine. So right here. So this is a catenary. This is not a parabola, but a catenary curve. And also, if you were to rotate this around like one axis, like this, then this is also the shape you get when you suspend like soap in between two circles. So there's some interesting math. If you wanted to make that with nodes, then now you have the tools to do so. And on a side note, the hyperbolic cosine, you can get it from the exponent by doing e to the x plus e to the minus x and then dividing by two. And the hyperbolic sine is e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by two, which is basically splitting it into an even and an odd function. So yeah, those are the new math nodes.